And now, welcome to the Sunday service. If you have any announcements that didn't make it into your congregational uh, emails and you wanted to type them in the chat, you're welcome to type them in the chat right now. My name is Ann Barker. I'm the minister at Westwood Unitarian. I use she, her pronouns. Um, Zoom etiquette suggests that we keep everybody muted during the service and then when it's over, we will un unmute you and uh, invite everybody to coffee groups. Bring your own coffee, of course for a visit and, um, and we have no time constraints this morning, so you're welcome to visit as long as that makes you happy. We wanted to lift up that there is a Canadian Unitarian Council online national Easter egg hunt. And so if you're looking for an Easter egg hunt, I think it goes through the whole month of April. So go to the Canadian Unitarian Council or just Google CUC Easter egg hunt and uh, and, and there's a whole pile of, of young and fun right there. So we want to remind you that each of our congregations has a process for announcements. Um, at Westwood, we send them to the office. I'm guessing you do that at UCE as well, and they get shared. Um, and both of us have instituted this great new thing, which is uh, email candles. So during our candles of joy and concern today, you'll have the opportunity to type into the chat and share your candles. But both congregations have an email address where we're collecting candles through the week and everything that comes in either by Wednesday night uh, at Westwood or Thursday lunch at UCE gets sent out to members and friends only in an email. So it's not broadcast on the wide interweb, it's going out to members and friends in your congregation. And that's a great way for us to share our candles with one another and stay abreast of what's going on in each other's lives. So those email addresses are candles at westwoodunitarian.ca or candles at uce.ca. So send your special candles of joy or concern or celebration to your congregation and um, they'll go out the next week. This is our fourth week online. Wow, hey? And it's still a pretty new experience. It's still new for many of us negotiating Zoom and things are always changing. We thank you for your support and for your patience. It's been really wonderful to have this way that we connect together and we're so thrilled that you show up. Um, we want to highlight at Westwood that Alexis has launched, is launching a new, uh, the Armchair Readers. And so if folks want to get together in a small group and share their favorite readings, just check out our website and you can find that there. If there's more people than one group will hold, they'll encourage more than one group. And now before we move on uh, to the service proper, I'd like to invite Gloria Krenbrink, the Secretary of the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, to unmute and to speak to the group. So this is an announcement for members of UCE, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, as required by our bylaws, and the annual general meeting for UCE will be on Sunday, May 3rd, that will be a Zoom meeting, so watch for more information on the time for that. The AGM materials will be on the UCE website, so that would include your agenda, committee reports, and the proposed budget and anything else. If someone needs a hard copy of their AGM materials, phone Janet at the church number and she will get that mailed out for you. Any of you that are in touch with UCE members who may not be on the internet, if you could give them a call and let them know, and they can attend that Zoom meeting by phone. Thank you, Gloria. And now we'll begin with the service. Gather the spirit, harvest the power. Peace. 
Good morning, everyone. As we begin, we wish to acknowledge that our two congregational buildings are situated on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant communities. Let us offer our commitment to support with love the healing and growth of all peoples on this land. Welcome. It is suggested that nervous public speakers imagine their audience in their underwear. Well, I found out this morning that to imagine them in Bonnie Easter Bunny hats does just the same. So good morning, everyone. As we, a gracious and inclusive welcome to all of you. This morning, we're joined together in a shared service between Westwood Congregate Universe Unitarian Congregation and UCE, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. We bid a special welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. The Sunday service is central to the lives of this, these communities. Worship reminds us of who we are, what we can become, how we want to live, what we hope to give from our best selves to the community and the world. After this service, if you visit our websites, westwoodunitarian.ca and uce.ca, you'll find our newsletters, and both congregations also have Facebook presences. My name is Dawn Hunter, and I use the pronouns she and her. I'm your service leader this morning. Our speaker is Westwood Unitarian's Reverend Ann Barker. Our musicians are Carrie Day and Rebecca Patterson. And thank you to Brenda Jackson from Westwood and Karen Belida from UCE and all the worship support people helping with tech support. You are truly appreciated. We come together this morning in support of each other in our own spiritual journeys, drawing on the wisdom of many religions and guided by our shared UU principles. We are a community open to all races, genders, sexual orientations, ages, abilities, and incomes. We are two of many congregations across the country and the world. We search for truth everywhere, but some of our named sources include the teachings of earth-based religions, words and deeds of prophetic people, and wisdom from the world's religions, as well as the authority of our own direct experience. As we stand together in strength during the difficult times in our world today, if you're feeling troubled or ill at ease, we hope your, our time together brings you comfort.
our Easter Sunday service has its roots in Good Friday and our Good Friday service. So we're going to light our chalice this morning with words that we shared in the Good Friday service. If you have a candle at home or a chalice and you want to light it along with me, that's one of the ways we close the distance between us at this time. Cameron Trimble from the Center for Progressive Renewal wrote, history moves as echoes of patterned pasts. All of our great movements have come from times of deep disruption. The new rituals will rise from us. You will find yourself singing a new song and I will say a new prayer and your friends will find new words and new ways to grieve. The rituals will come but this time they will come from the truest expression of all of us living in this time and this place. They carry the realness of our world and the earnestness of our seeking the holy, and this is as it should be. So we light our collective chalice this morning in the spirit of hope. Hope for a new dawn, hope for our spiritual renewal, and hope for peace. At this time in our service, we pause to reflect on our week. We recall the milestones, the joys, concerns, and sorrows, the challenges in our lives, those who need our healing thoughts. Community is deepened by sharing with each other what is in our hearts. We invite you now to type your candles of concern or celebration into the chat. And like Anne said at the beginning, we encourage you to participate in the candle email program at your congregation. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Please join me in the affirmation you see on the screen. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. I would now like to invite and, oh, sorry, am I too soon with that? I would like to now invite Andrew Mills to introduce the offertory. Hi there. The Westwood Unitarian Congregation and the Unitarian Church of Edmonton are self-governing and self-supporting communities. They rely on your donations to support their staff and programs. During this unprecedented time, they need your financial support more than ever to maintain the connections with members and friends. There's a number of online methods you can use to support your church. The best method for supporting our churches is to set up ongoing automatic donations. Please contact your respective church admin office, stewardship chair or canvas chair to set these up. Both churches are also set up to take online donations through Canada Helps. Find the link on the church's web pages or go to Canada Helps and do a quick search. Instead of using checks, both churches are now set up for Interact bank transfers. Set up your Interact transfer to the church office using either the email info at westwoodunitarian.ca for Westwood or chadmin at uce.ca for UCE. Don't forget to share your abundance. For the month of April, UCE has identified the Unitarian Universalist United Nations office as a cause to support, and I've put that in the chat line so you can see that. Please take time to send them some financial support through their website. I also encourage you to remember to give to local, national, and international charities that are helping others through this difficult time. Please give generously to sustain the work of your church and to also share your abundance with others that are in need. From you I receive, to you I give. Easter message is one of sacrifice, suffering, transformation, and an emerging hope. My name is Reverend Ann Barker. I use she, her pronouns. At Westwood this month, our theme is the fifth you, you source. Humanist teachings which counsel us to heed the guidance of reason and the results of science and warn us against idolatries of the mind and spirit. I couldn't be more grateful that our theme this year has been the Unitarian Universalist sources because it means so much to be talking about what are the resources that help us and support us and nurture us so that we have what we need to get through a complicated time. Easter can be a complicated topic for some UUs especially if we've suffered harm or oppression at the hands of organized religion. But in the current era, Unitarian Universalists, in our desire to learn and grow, held carefully alongside our commitments to reason and science, the way we most typically approach Easter is, the Easter story is just that, as a story. If Christianity is at the core of your spiritual practice, you may find this homily a little bit simplistic. We encourage you to help your companion you use at your own pace and always as you are willing to understand what is sacred and sustaining for you. From one another, we gain insight, perspective, and hopefully wisdom, and we heal old injuries that we sometimes carry from times when someone wielded religious authority as a weapon. 
We know intellectually that there is wisdom and value in many traditions, as long as they're practiced in a way that cares for people, that does not shame them, that lifts up universal truths like the inherent worth and dignity of all beings and the inseparability of all of our lives. At this moment in history, where we become forced to be acutely aware of our impacts on one another, we need stories of accountability, of community, of hope. If humanism is at the core of your being, a practice that relies not on God or the supernatural, but is rooted instead in reason, responsibility, and caring, then the Easter story can tend to be ignored or even rejected outright. It's common instead in our churches to speak of spring, renewal, and new life at this time of year, especially on this Sunday. But within the Easter message, there is something more than the circle of life as it is played out year by year by nature. And this year in particular, it offers us a reminder that we might find, take a particular inspiration from. The miracle of Easter, as Unitarian Universalists understand it, is that tragedy is turned to triumph, that the love and understanding of the people would shine a light on the culture and the practices of their time, and that the people would transform their ways of being to be in alignment with what they hold to be precious and true, and that the people would move forward in faith and hope and knowing. We don't need a supernatural interpretation. We don't have to believe in God or in a literal resurrection. What we need today is to feel less alone. We need to see in the ways that history repeats itself over and over again that life still contains cruel injustices, that political power and great wealth have a controlling grip on commerce and culture, that the majority of the people suffer within our social systems, some far more than others, and that the ones who express dissent are often ridiculed and punished, sometimes to their death. If that were the end of the Easter story, I'd be happy to abandon it. But the core of the Easter story is this. There will be people with insight who see the corruption and the confusion in our culture and who will bravely name it aloud. There is more to life than achievement, that the core of everything is love. There will be people who listen, even if they are afraid and while they are sometimes conflicted or doubtful, they know within themselves that there is truth in the message. There is more to life than achievement, and that at the core of everything is love. There will be some at the top of the hierarchy who are threatened by this message, who know that if too many people come to this new understanding, then their domination and control are threatened, and so they will push back with all of their might. But there is more to life than achievement, and at the core of everything, is love. There will be people who resist anyway, who take their lives not only in their hands but also to their hearts, who will practice and who will continue to teach that there is more to life than achievement and at the core of everything is love. There will be losses, catastrophic sometimes losses. But in these times, doorways of wisdom open. And the people not only believe, but more than that, they come to know that there is more to life than achievement and that the core of everything is love. Our duty as Unitarian Universalists, as systems, citizens of a global interdependent web, is to take these moments of upheaval, these experiences that pull back the veil and use them to change us. Allow them to transform us. To hold one another in the grief and loss when we experience tragedy. To support one another as we learn to make the changes that are necessary for the health of each other and for the health of the planet. 
to encourage one another in the bravery that will be necessary to resist the rush back to our old paradigms, our familiar ways of beings that have had their flaws laid bare for us. And to embolden one another, to speak for the renewed understanding that there is more to life than achievement and that the core of everything is love. Whatever story it is that inspires you, may it help you to hold on to this prayer. May we all come through this. May we all come through this together. May we all come through this together renewed. Now I invite you to say that with me, to repeat after me as I say it one more time. May we all come through this. May we all come through this together. May we all come through this together, renewed. Blessed be, amen, and happy Easter. Let it be a dance we do May I have this dance with you Through the good times and the bad times too Let it be a dance Let a dancing song be heard Carrie, that was a beautiful arrangement. Now we're all going to have to learn that when we come back together. I want to let you know that if you'd like to see the Breakwater Project again, the limitations of Zoom give us some wobbles and glitches in the sound. But if you'd like to see it again, it is posted to both of our congregation's Facebook pages. And they're happy to have it shared far and wide. It is tradition at the Unitarian Church of Edmonton to close each service with the song, Carry the Flame. The congregation stands 
or sits if they prefer and holds hands while everybody sings together. Today, following these closing words, we will play a recording of the UCE congregation singing Carry the Flame, and you are invited to sit along or to listen, whichever you prefer. Because we can't hold hands, we're going to let you in on one of Westwood's not-so-secret secrets. Our Westwood worship committees always have a chalice, chalice lighting. So here's how it goes. One hand, another hand, under your chin, and now your head is the flame. So wherever you are, you have a chalice. So if you don't have a candle to extinguish, you can just hold your flame and then let it down at the end of this reading. We know that it is not our buildings that bind us together. It's not just our physical spaces, it is our love. It is the connections we forge and maintain to one another as we find our places within the interdependent web. Virtual space may not meet every need, but we are together, home each to the other. May you carry this sense of connection with you in the coming days as we continue to navigate these new realities and strengthen new ways to be face to face, heart to heart, and love to love. Because at the core of everything is love. Although we aren't able to feel the physical presence of each other over our coffee time, we have our coffee, our Zoom cafe set up for you in breakout rooms of eight or nine people each. So the system will automatically mute you. So you click on the microphone icon to unmute. If you're on a phone, dial number six, dial, <laughs> press number six will unmute or mute you. You can leave a room anytime by choosing return to main room. If you would like to change rooms at any time, return to the main room and we can move you around. Breakout rooms will close in 30 minutes and automatically return you to the main room. You are welcome to stay and visit or we'll do another round of rooms if you wish. Or you can click leave the meeting at any time to end. Thank you so much for joining us this morning.